Look at this. Woo! This is on the top of the top. Yeah. Where I was born and grew. Look at that. This is the first school I went to. I was little. I call it Gotti School. This is a church that uh, church ground. My grandmother's foundation is from around the back. That's where they started out. Way on top of the hills here. This is where the Maroons ran to, in the mountains. Well, my most vivid memory as a child was this school. We were very poor and we were eating rice. And I remember we didn't have enough utensils to eat rice. And I had to wait on one of my colleagues to eat. When I got the spoon, the handle of the spoon was cut off. It was a big soup metal spoon. It was heavy, but the handle was cut off of it. And I lift up the spoon, it was bigger than my hands, and I was eating rice with it. At this school they call, so this is my first school, Gaudi school. And that's when I I think that's a point in my life when I realize what life was. That life was so hard that I had to wait to eat rice. I was very young, I don't remember what age, but I, that never left me throughout my entire life. And um, I think that also built me. It made me strong, and it made me patient. It made me really humble. That point in my life, I think, is one of the pivotal points that made me the man I am today. You know, and um, that taught me patience, humility, and it taught me a lot about life. And until this day, in my health, in my success, and all that I've shared with people. It started from this moment on top of this hill. This is this was my training ground for life. You know? It started here. Because I remember vividly that I had to wait to eat. So, you know, whatever your life has to offer you, on that side, I had to be patient. I had to um, be humble. But on this side, a whole world of possibility was open to me. Blessings, the sun, the landscape, the language of the almighty creation was right in front of me. So as a boy growing up seeing this, how could you not believe in creation and the power and this is what you're presented with you know some of us were born and when we're young you know we don't see this majesty so in growing up and seeing this majesty it is one of the reasons why I set sail to preserve as much of the culture of Jamaica as I possibly could and I worked on the SaveJamaica.com project because this was the gift to me from Jamaica. This language, you know? And as poor as we were, we were still some of the most wealthiest people in the world. Look at this. You don't 
look at this. I'm standing right here. I'm standing. And this is our backyard. This is my backyard. How rich could you possibly be when this is your backyard? Hmm? And this is what wealth is. We don't have running water here. We don't have, at well, the time, sometimes we didn't have light. But this is wealth. We planted our food, we grew our chickens. You know, and we woke up whenever we wanted to, went to sleep whenever we wanted to. We were free. This is what we call in Jamaica Zion. This is what we call freedom. And I'm coming back here. And I'm going to build my home over here. Yeah? This is what I was given to. And you know they say those who are given, much those who are given to, much expected. So I completed my Save Jamaica project. I preserved as much as the herb as I could. The gift that was given to me to keep me alive today in good health at age 44 this year, you know, I give back to other Jamaicans the gift that we were given to. You are free Jamaicans. This is Zion. Accept it. Plant your food. Preserve your herbs. No problem. Keep moving. Keep moving. Be humble, be kind, be merciful, be patient. Use time as a way to connect with the Almighty Creation, and you too will make it back home. You will make it back home. Many of you said to me, Randy, where is this? Where can I see this view, brethren? Eh? Some things you don't give out. But it's in Manchester. Give thanks and blessings.